Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the kitchen air refrigerator, evaporator, fan motor, grommet. It's going to be a very easy repair and it should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new evaporator, fan motor, grommet. The evaporator fan motor grommet goes in between the evaporator motor and its mounting bracket. The main reason to be changing it out is if it's torn or damaged and the evaporator motor is making a lot of noise. In order to change the part, we have to open up the freezer door. Now that we have the door open, we have access to the freezer. We have to take the back wall off, so if you have to, you can move your shelves up. And then we have to take all the baskets out. They all come out the same way. You want to pull them out until they stop and lift them up and pull them out the rest of the way. Once you have them out, you can set them aside. In order to make it easier to take the back panel off, we're gonna take the light bulb cover and the bulb out. We're also gonna take the rails off on the right hand side. We're gonna use a Phillips screwdriver to take the screw out. Once you have the screw out, we can grab it, and then we're gonna pull the lens towards us and pull this locking tab out of the liner. And we can unscrew the light bulb. Once you have it unscrewed, you can pull it out of the freezer. Now we can use a Phillips screwdriver to take the screws out that hold all the rails in on this side. Now that we have the rails out of the way, we can reach in and take out the six screws that hold the back panel on. We're going to use our Phillips screwdriver to reach in and take them out. Now that we have the screws out, we can take the panel off. To get the back panel off, we're going to grab it at the bottom and lift up so it comes off these two tabs and then we can pull it out from behind that other panel and then pull it out towards the side. Once you have it free, you can pull it out of the freezer. There's two grommets that hold the motor in, one on each end of the motor, so we have to take the motor off to get to them. First thing we're gonna do is pull the evaporator fan blade off you just need to pull it off and you can set it aside. Once you have the fan blade off, we can take the motor off the bracket. We have to lift up and compress this black plastic piece to release it from the white piece. Once you have it off both sides, you can lower it down and pull it off. You can take the grommet out of it and leave the bracket inside. If you're changing the other grommet, you can pull this down and carefully set the motor down so you don't damage any of the evaporator lines or the fins. And then you can just press the grommet out and pull it out. Now that you have the grommet out, we can pull it out of the freezer. Here's the old evaporator fan motor grommet next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. If you're installing the fan motor grommet on the upper one, you just have to push it up into place and then you can lift the evaporator fan motor up and then we can put the grommet on the lower one. Once you have it in place, we can grab the bracket and we have to put it around the, the grommet at the bottom. and lift it up into place, and then we can snap it into the white bracket. Once you have it snapped in place, we can put the fan blade back on. 
All you have to do is press it down so it bottoms out on the shaft. Once you have it all the way down, you can spin it to make sure it's not going to hit anything. Once you have the fan blade installed, we can put the back wall of the freezer on. We're just going to feed it in and get it lined up. Once you have it in position, you may have to flex a little bit to get this underneath the back panel. And then once you have that in, we can lift up on it so the tabs go into place. Once you have the tabs in, we can use our Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in that hold it in. Now that we have the back panel on, we can put the rails back in. To put the rails in, you want to make sure that this is in the front, and in the back we're going to use the farthest hole back. To put the rails in, we're going to put them all in the same way. We're going to put the front screw in and get it started, and then we can lift the rail up to get the back screw lined up and started, and then we can tighten them both down. Now that we have the rails installed, we can put the light bulb and cover on. To put the light bulb in, we're just going to screw it in clockwise until it tightens down. And then we can put the cover on. We just have to line up the support tab, the cutout in the liner, and then we can rotate it over. And we can use the Phillips screwdriver to put the screw in to hold it in place. Once you have the cover in place, we can put the baskets back in. To put the baskets back in, all you have to do is line them up with the rails and push them in. The bottom basket was the large basket with the angled back. All you have to do is push it back until it's all the way in. The second large basket was the totally square one. The upper basket was the smaller basket with the angled back. Once you have all the baskets back in, we can close the freezer door. Now that we have the refrigerator put back together, we can plug it back in and make sure it starts to cool. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.